Welcome to another edition of Sportflow Outdoors. Well, we're back at the old homestead in Minnesota. The snow is melting rapidly, which makes it a great time to get out and look for some sheds. No, not that kind of shed. I'm talking about shed deer antlers. See, the white-tailed buck, the male white-tailed deer, every winter will lose his antlers. They'll fall off like an old tooth and just lay there on the forest floor, generally get covered up with snow right away. Well, this time of year, uh, we're losing our snow cover and we have a chance of seeing those shed antlers. Now's the time of year to go after them before the little critters, the rodents, the little toothy guys uh, get a hold of them. They like to chew on them for their mineral content. So now's a great time of year to go out, look for these shed antlers. Uh, let's see what we can find. The challenge is, of course, you know, these antlers, they kind of look like every other stick laying out there on the forest floor. So it's a bit of a challenge, uh, but it's a beautiful day, um, mid-March. Let's go see what we can find. You want to find the trails that the deer have been using. Uh, it's a great place to start. Also bedding areas, areas where you know they, they come in and, the, and bed down. Um, of course you want to look off the trail slightly and sometimes in the middle of nowhere because that's where they go too. So that's, that's our challenge today. Uh, I'm on a pretty good trail right now. There's a little bit too much snow cover where I'm at, but we, we might we might just see an antler sticking up somewhere around here. How about we climb this tree and maybe get a better look at things. It's the sound of an old man trying to get up a ladder. Alrighty. Okay. <laughs> well, there we are. <laughs> it's beautiful out here. I'll take a look around. Sometimes it's fun just to be up in a tree. Why do we really need deer antlers anyway? Let's go boil some sap. You see, a few years back, Pastor Keith asked me, he said, Tom, do you know what this is? It looked like a car part to me. I, I did not know what it was. He said, that is for tapping the sap out of a maple tree to make maple syrup. He had a surplus of them. He said, uh, would, I, would I like some? Well, absolutely. Let's give it a shot. So since then, this time of year, again, it's March, kind of pre-spring. Uh, we've tapped some maple trees. The perfect time to do it when the sap runs is when it gets a little warmer during the day like it is today and then gets below freezing at night. That cycle of above freezing and below freezing gets the sap moving. And uh, so we've got some trees uh, tapped. I think we should boil it down to make some syrup. Well, we got a nice little fire started here. Uh, we got about only about three and a half, four gallons of sap. It's still pretty early on, and I think the sap's just starting to run. But we're gonna we're gonna take care of the sap we've got. We've got a the fire going here. We got our pot that we're gonna uh, put the sap in and let it boil down. Uh, people ask me, they say, Tom, you know, why don't you just use propane? Well, I'm pretty cheap for one, or for everything really. Um, and you can see there's no shortage of wood to burn around here. So this is a longer process. It's it's really hands-on I got to be here sort of feeding kindling the whole time once I get a, a rolling boil going I want to keep it going not too hot, but just just enough So it's kind of a really hands-on the whole time, but uh, I'm in the outdoors 
Uh, it's clouded up a little bit, but it's uh, it's a great day, and uh, no telling what we'll see while we're out here uh, boiling down the sap. You can hear that. I hope you can. That's the sound of sandhill cranes. We're in a northern Anoka County, Minnesota, and March 18th. There we go. And 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 the sandhill cranes uh, are coming back. I don't know where they spent their winter, but it's a great sound. They'll they'll nest in the area, uh, just driving the roads around here. Come spring, summer, we'll see uh, we'll see some babies with their parents. There's no sound quite quite like the sandhill crane. to the end of the outdoor portion of the sap boil. Um, it's come way down. It's been a few hours. We don't want to let this get too far. Um, if we just walked away and let it boil, it'd just be a hard sugar candy at the bottom of this pot. and We don't want that. We want syrup. Uh, so we're going to uh, keep an eye on it, let it come down just a hair more, cool it down, and then take it inside, put it on a burner, on the stove top where we have a lot more control and we can get it just to the right uh, amount of sugar content so that it is true maple syrup. Okay, here we are in the kitchen and this is all we're left with. That big five gallon bucket almost full after uh, hours outside, that's what we're left with. We're going to finish it off on the stove top so we have better control. Uh, I'm kind of invading, muscling in on Kelly's kitchen here. Uh, she's been working here. <laughs> uh, we had a traditional St. Patrick's Day uh, dinner yesterday with uh, what corned beef, cabbage, potatoes carrots and what she's done is taken the leftovers from that and made a delicious soup. Uh, so we've got something here. What is it? A, That's a Reuben dip. A Reuben dip. So uh, she was resourceful there and there's even a couple Reuben sandwiches. So there you go. I'm eating well. People who look at the videos and say, boy, Tom's put on a couple pounds. Well, yeah, probably. But uh, here we go. We're going to try to finish off uh, the syrup on the stove top. We'll see how it goes. After all that boiling, about three and a half gallons, almost four gallons of maple sap, and we've got ourselves about 10, maybe 11 ounces. There you go. That's kind of what you get. It's about a 40 to 1 ratio. Yeah, 40 ounces will get you one ounce of uh, syrup. So there it is, our finished golden wonderful product. Oh, you know it. <laughs> I mean, just shoveling away. <laughs>